Welcome to uh, the second segment of the trilogy, Inside Touch. Um, so, you know, the last segment was about figuring out what to do, um, right? So observing movement, uh, doing evaluations, framing a lesson, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the, one of the reasons the segments have different content is just so that we don't try to talk about everything at once, which makes things, you know, a little bit crazy. Well, we'll, we'll put things more together um, in the next segment. This segment, we're going to answer the question, what is Feldenkrais touch? Now, what makes our way of touching special and unique? Um, we're going to go look kind of uh, over the repertoire of, of uh, touching skills. And I want to say touching more than FI because, well, you'll see. I mean, I think touch can be used in ATM. So who, who asked me about ATM and FI together? Yeah, Sarah. Okay. So, um, you know, I want to talk about how, how we can blend them. Because I think ATM has a place in FI lessons, a really important place. And I think there are ways that you can touch people when you're doing ATM with them, too. So anyways, I just want to talk about touch in the bigger picture as well as in terms of FI. Um, when it comes to FI, we're going to talk about three aspects of, of FI. So one is the actual technique. You know, like, what do you do with your hands? What's the, the grip, the position, the hold, whatever you want to call it? Um, and part of the technique of what you do with your hand is how the shape of your hand meets the skeleton of the person you're touching. Mostly the skeleton. We're going to look a little bit at muscular techniques, too, and talk about that. So we talk about how working with muscles fits in the Feldenkrais method. But we're going to talk about how the shape of the hand fits with what we want to do. Because you know, <clears throat> in terms of technique, you could say you're using your hand as a tool. And so it, it has to fit the job. It has to work in really special ways. So we're going to go through what I would say is uh, some of the basic technical vocabulary in terms of hand positions and things. <clears throat> and you'll see that they'll crop up in a couple of different ways. And that, so that's one thing. That's technique by itself. Of course, technique serves a purpose. In other words, every time we touch somebody, we touch them in order to uh, influence their experience in some way. Right? Um, you know, if the, in the uh, love boat analogy, we're, you know, we're all Julie. We're all you know, creating experiences for people. And so in terms of that, whenever we touch someone, we're creating an experience. So what experience are we creating when we touch someone? So you could say in one hand, what is the intention? What's this teacher's intention? On the other hand, what are we looking for from the student? Moshe said FI is a dance, it's a communication. So we're going to look at the language of communication, and we're going to look at it from a pedagogical point of view. In other words, how does touching someone this way serve their learning? If it's a conversation, then the communication is not, you know, our, our interaction is not uh, based on commands. It's based on requests, questions, and hints. Um, I think that part of the reason technique is so important is so that when you touch someone, what your, what your question is really clear. If your question isn't clear, how do you know what their answer means? So anyways, we're going to talk about that, the conversational and pedagogical aspect. But um, I think it's really important whenever you touch someone that you're not thinking just about what you're doing with your hand, but you're thinking about what experience you want to give them. And then the third thing, you know, as you uh, probably have heard before from me, I think of ATM as giving yourself an FI and FI as giving an ATM to two people. So that in an FI, it's not a question of moving someone else. It's a question of moving yourself in order to invite the person to move in a certain way. And so not only are you a part of the equation, but you're a really important part of the equation. We could say this in a lot of different ways. So, you know, on the, on the kind of fundamental and kind of hard-headed way, 
We could say your biomechanics make a difference. Your biomechanics make a difference in that the harder you work, the less you sense. So your biomechanics make a difference in terms of your sensitivity. Your biomechanics make a difference in terms of how you'll feel at the end of the day and at the end of the week and at the end of the year and at the end of a few years. And so, you know, we want to look at how we use ourselves and we want to learn what the early warning signs are. Because once something hurts, it's too late, especially when you're doing repetitive stuff. So, you know, when we talk about self-use and technique, we're going to talk about things to look out for. And the feedback that you're going to get, you know, as you're working from each other and from me and from Barb and from, this is Anastasi Siodos, who's joining us for this segment. Um, Anastasi actually is uh, an employee of Mind in Motion, so we work together. So anyway, um, uh, so we're going to talk about technique. And so one of the things that, in terms of self-use, we're going to talk about what you're doing with your hands and what you're doing with yourself. And the purpose here is not so much that you know, you're going to get the insight that's going to change you forever, but to give you things to work on as you keep getting, as you keep working. Um, you know, those are kind of the boneheaded, very specific, you could say, uh, biomechanical stuff. There, there's more to it than that. And I think it's harder to explain, but it's equally important. You know, I think being a Feldman Christ teacher, you know, when you're giving an FI, if you're part of the metaphor, is it's kind of like going to work naked. Because every time you touch someone, they touch you back. And every time you feel what's going on with them, they feel what's going on with you. So there is a great deal of intimacy when you touch someone. I mean, in terms of your way of touching them and your way of being present and your way of asking them to move is communicated to them. So, you know, the extreme, someone's head like this and say, well, why can't you give me your weight? Relax. Right? I mean, that's the extreme example. But I think, you know, if we're, if we're moving someone and we're asking them to uh, feel their skeleton and to feel forced through their skeleton, I think that that means we have to feel ours. That, very simply put, forced through our skeleton, feel where our weight is. That we, we really have to, you know, like, organize ourselves, coordinate our own movement. Um, one of my favorite workshops, public workshops to teach these days is uh, the martial arts of, da of daily life. And when I teach that workshop, eventually somebody says, do you practice a martial art? And I said, you know, I've done a little bit of studying, enough to know that I don't practice that, but I do practice a martial art. It's called functional integration. Because I think giving an FI calls my attention in a certain way. And um, I actually think that's a great thing. You know, that's a benefit of being a practitioner because it means that when I'm working with someone, it brings me to a certain level of attention with myself. Um, that is challenging in a way that meditation is challenging. That calls forth a certain kind of just being present, staying there and being um, rigorous in a way um, and committed. But I think in doing that, I get... I get the extra benefit. And the extra benefit is that when I give a lesson, I get a lesson. Because as far as I'm concerned, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the way that things work out, it's nice to get paid. But if you don't feel good at the end of the lesson, I think it's a problem. You know, I, I'm, I am passionate about self-use because I think in my own development as a practitioner, it was kind of glossed over. So that I knew it was important. And I knew that there was something from the ATM lessons and from my experience that I was supposed to somehow um, you know, digest, incorporate, and make a part of my behavior. But when my practice, you know, long ago now, went from seeing six or ten people a week to working in the physio clinic, seeing six or ten people a day, three days a week, I was, and I mean this in the medical sense of the terminology, fucked up. You know, I mean, like, my wrists hurt, and my shoulders hurt, and my neck hurt, and 
to conf true confessions, I think my, uh, my spirit hurt in a way, you know, because I felt like a hypocrite. Here I was helping people get better, and I was getting worse. And I knew that there was something wrong. And actually, at that time, is the time when I, did, I studied Aikido, itinerant Aikido studying, you know, coming in and out of town and whatever. Um, but I think I, I studied enough Aikido that I understood something that really made a difference in my work as a practitioner. And, and I had to, it, in, in a way, I had to step back and relearn how to be a practitioner all over again. Because I don't think self-use is the icing you put on the cake at the after, uh, after, afterwards. I think it's an integral part of learning. So in these five days, we're going to start at the beginning. And we're going to look at really basic FI things, not because you don't know them, but because the, it's kind of like the developmental sequence. You might have missed a little here or a little there. So by going back through it, you're going to realize what you missed. Right? And I also think there are some fundamental things that the more you understand them, the more you'll give them time as you're working with people.